I got the chance to play Atlas Fallen early and share my first impressions on the gameplay and what I think about it with you guys. And I've kept this first impressions review of the game as spoiler free as possible. In short, Atlas Fallen is a huge open world adventure RPG game where the main focus is really on the action and combat. And the combat carries this game, especially with the versatility of the skills and abilities and character build options that you have access to. But the game is also playable in co-op as well, which is always fantastic to hear. And I wish we had more co-op games. So starting out in character creation, you can actually make yourself. I don't mind playing as a fixed protagonist in most games, but it is nice to be able to put the role play in RPG now and again. And to that end, you can make a male or female character and you have awesome beard options, which is very important to me. Then we jump in to this huge open world desert, which is kind of weird because I've not really explored a game that's only based in a desert. It's full of sand dunes and the remnants of an ancient civilization that's now clinging on to life as all these mythical sand creatures take over. Now, I actually really like the design aesthetic of this open world, mainly because of how your character traverses through it. I mean, you literally surf across the sand dunes like you're ice skating. It looks cool and it makes traveling across the dunes way more interesting than it would be if you were just walking everywhere. I mean, who walks? Walking is for losers. Look at this. I feel like not many video games put that much effort into just how you move across the environment. So I appreciate that they've done something different there. You can also double jump and then dash in the air. And as you upgrade your gauntlet on your wrist, you become even more of a parkour god, able to jump, dodge and dash in different combinations to traverse the environment. And really, as you put these movements together while in combat, that's where the game really does well. There's also quite a few puzzle aspects to the open world environment as well, like raising a structure from the ground to access a ruin that you couldn't otherwise climb. And then you have to jump across that ruin to gain access to some treasure or rare ingredients that you can use to upgrade your weapons or unlock more skills and armor. For the most part, exploring the open world of Atlas Fallen was really enjoyable. And climbing and exploring these ruins actually feels like you're being rewarded with secret little chests or lootable items that can either be sold to traders or various ingredients that you can harvest and use to upgrade your skills and abilities and so on. I really hate it when games don't reward you exploring their environment, so I'm glad that they've ticked that box for me. But many of the resources you are gathering can be used to purchase or craft and upgrade your armor and abilities. The armor sets each have three upgrades each. And once they're fully upgraded, you basically unlock a trait which will enhance a certain playstyle. Like this armor set here makes it so your combo attacks actually reduce your foe's armor for a limited time, allowing you to dish out even more damage. You can also dye your armor sets as well. And the abilities you can unlock in this game are actually pretty exciting and they really change how you can play it. You can unlock hammer throws, proximity mines, summoning a giant tornado which debuffs anything it hits as well as doing damage and i mean it looks epic now as for the combat gameplay itself i mean literally the best part about the game each weapon that your character has and there's several you can get in the game but for this gameplay i had the axe and the sword and normally in any other game i think oh it's boring there's only two weapons but these weapons are kind of like eight weapons in themselves. So how it actually works is you always have two weapons equipped. So like the axe and the sword. And each one of those weapons has 10 attacks each. Firstly, if you tap the attack button, you'll fast attack. And if you hold it down, you'll do a strong attack. And depending how you combine a different series of those attack, like fast attack three times in a row does a certain combo. Whereas if you like fast attack, jump, then heavy attack, you do another combo. So there's like 10 different combos for each weapon. And you can also combine some weapons with other weapons and you get like these crazy sort of unique combat effects. Like for example, the sword isn't just a sword. It turns into a whip when you would do certain attacks, pulling you closer to the enemy, kind of like a grappling hook. And then you can just go ham with your other heavy weapon attacks and so on. And this sort of like creativity behind the different combos and attacks 
actually makes the combat feel even more engaging when you play the game. And to be honest with you, I didn't really memorize any of the combo attacks. I was just smashing buttons and different things were happening and it looked cool. But also, uh, just like Elden Ring or Dark Souls, which I feel like any game with combat is always compared to, Atlas Fallen does have a parry button so you can parry the enemies. Now, when you hit that parry, you basically cover yourself in like sand armor and you're like immune for like a second. But it is much easier in this game to hit those parries compared to like Elden Ring or Dark Souls where you've really got to get it down to the right frame. So instead in Atlas Fallen, the enemies basically their eyes glow red. So you know that if you parry now, you're probably going to hit that parry and then you'll block their attack completely. But if you don't want to parry, you can also rely on spamming dodge as well. And there's no stamina bar, so you can just unlimited dodge everything. But if you like dodge into an attack, you still get hit, obviously. And if you're worried about the combat, but you think the game looks cool, it has difficulty settings as well. Also, as you're in combat, you build up this blue bar at the bottom here. And that allows you to use special attacks, abilities, or even heal up as well. So just like in Bloodborne, you kind of have to be aggressively attacking to actually heal yourself, which I actually like as a game mechanic. And I would say if the combat of Atlas Fallen appeals to you, this is literally the best part of the game. It's why you're going to play it, and it's when the game looks at its best. Zooming around in the air like a parkour god, comboing enemies into oblivion. Now the big foes have like an extra layer of difficulty. They've got shields on part of their bodies, which you need to break before you can damage them. Now, one of the things I was quite happy with was the fact that the enemies didn't feel like bullet sponge. I was actually engaged in the combat and it didn't feel like I was just hitting a rock. But you get it, the combat's good. As far as side quests go and storyline without spoiling anything, your character is fully voice acted and the magical gauntlet that you're wearing and you can upgrade is embodied by a spirit that talks to you. So you'll often be talking to your glove as you're adventuring around. This object it is powerful. It is an essence stone. But I found early on especially the gauntlet was pretty annoying. When it explains certain game mechanics to you, it just does it in like a patronizing way where I'm like, yeah, okay, I get it. And I also don't like the voice very much. I felt like when the gauntlet just shut up, I, I was enjoying the game more, if that makes sense. As for the side quests, you can of course talk to many of the NPCs around the world and towns and ruins to pick up various side quests that mostly amount to go here and kill this or go here and find that or can you check if my son is still alive and so on. So there's nothing revolutionary with the side quest, but that's clearly not meant to be the focus of Atlas Fallen. This game is all about the combat and creating a powerful character. And if you jump into the game with that in mind, I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. As for the storyline, I was only allowed to play a small section of the game. So I can't really give you a full impressions of what I thought of the story and if it's going to be interesting or any good to you, because I saw like a small snippet that wasn't at the start or end of the game. So I really can't tell you much about it until Atlas Fallen is released on May 16th. So subscribe for that and I'll see you there.